So besides objects, uh, lights, materials, what else do we need to make a rendering? We need a camera. So what we see here right now, this is just our 3D viewport. But if we want to make an image, we're not uh, doing a screenshot. Now we want to render this really into an image. So let's go add, and there is a camera. Uh, where it is? Is it? It's there. Okay, very good. So let's move this one along the y-axis to here. We set the rotations all to zero. Move this up a little bit. And working with cameras is actually pretty cool in uh, rendering, particularly in a more mature program like Blender. And again, Blender for rendering is comparable to Maya, 3D Max, Cinema 4D, um, it's not taking shortcuts or making rendering easy for industrial designers and then skipping steps. This is just plain old good render tool with lots of features. Might be overwhelming at the beginning, but again, this is all very logical. And if you have a little bit of photography interest, which as an industrial designer, we should anyway, we can translate all our real world experience into digital photography, digital rendering. So here's my camera center point. There's a triangle. The triangle defines where it's up. So technically speaking, let's assume this would be the viewfinder. This is the way how we would look through. Uh, well, <laughs> I want to take a look at that, that chair, but from this way now. So we need to rotate our camera. Along the x-axis, I can rotate this, let's say 90 degrees there. Now it looks the wrong direction. Let's rotate it here. 180. Very good. So next thing what we will do is I will move my mouse here to a border, right click and say split horizontally. And one more time. Split vertically. Here I will stop this turn this back on to there. And this is an active camera. You see this is also filled as a triangle. When we have more cameras, Shift D, you see they are not filled. So this is the active one. Let's delete these two. We can go now into the camera by clicking onto this. And there we are. Cool, no? So now we look through our camera. This is a very common setup now when we do renderings, camera view, 3D view, maybe another 3D view or materials. So here I don't really do much besides looking through. This is where most of the work happens. So I can move this back, can move this up and down, can move this to here and try to frame this image or the product. I can zoom in a little bit more. Okay, now. Hmm. So let's play around a little bit what we can all do with the camera. On the right side, you see now when we have a camera selected, the object data will look like a camera. A light is a light and a mesh object, one is mesh. Good. So what does focal length mean? Well, it's actually very easy to describe. This is, with 16, a fisheye lens. And with something like this, a tailor lens. You see how this nearly has no perspective for shortening. So the higher the length, less perspective for shortening, lower this value more perspective for shortening. I most times operate in something between 50 and 90. That works really well. Okay. We also can go into panoramic. It's actually kind of cool. Now there's our 2D image. Now we can just zoom in and out. There's no perspective for shortening. This is just a two-dimensional image. 
kind of cool actually if you want to make here check this out go to top view shift d go to here r90 rotate and then uh, with this camera selected we go view camera set active object as camera Zuck. there's our orthographic side view how awesome is this so we can generate perspective renderings as well as orthographic renderings simply by switching the camera to the individual values shift x and shift y uh, what is that well the camera here yeah, let's take a look at this the camera is not rotating but it is actually moving things left and right or up or down Okay, that's, that's maybe the most confusing thing to be uh, or to work with. But here, check this out. So I move the camera up and then we are sh here. I move this back down. So I think about it like I'm looking straight forward, but I see more what is under the camera. And that's kind of like what the tilt shift is doing. It helps preventing elements to rotate a lot i will add a little cube here there put this cube to there so you can see maybe what will happen when we set this to zero okay so i would like to see everything more from top this is the x-axis so along the x-axis let's rotate this there you might notice it now that here if we bring this even more to here this line is now um, tilting the more we look from a higher angle the more this happens okay for example that is visually not very pleasing so let's go back to 90 and use this, this look at that you see the edges are straight vertical the tilt shift for example is super useful also in interior renderings you never and it ticks me off when i see this in student work or professional work when when people render down in a in a room it makes everything look very amateur you use a tilt shift so you look straight and move the picture plane down that simply generates cleaner, more professional looks. Okay, so then we have clip start. This is actually also kind of kind of fun to work with. Also here we can say, uh, show me this and 160. <laughs> so now we we have from 155 to 160 from this camera. That is actually then where we see our our object where is this realistically very useful can actually be quite cool when you are in um, doing an architecture rendering and your camera is outside a building and you want to take a look at something inside the building then this is when you use this clip depth of field now for for blurring the new version of Blender has a ridiculously improved depth of field effect for EV. So we will go into this to camera. We can forget this for the moment. This is not of use. Background image. Now we want to put something into the, the background. Viewport uh, display. Oh, this is quite nice. So the limit. There you can see the limit, for example mist passport 2 is actually very useful there i can darken the outside of my camera frame because this what you see now that is actually what will go into an image and for all the photography geeks around us we also have thirds center diagonals guidelines and all that stuff <coughs> so very useful to have this in here to have a guide to do better composition when we do um, when we place the camera so before uh, we bring this to an end 
Um, now I was talking about this is now what we will see in our actual rendering. Our object is taller, our image, however, is wider. Where do I change this in the camera? And this is a little bit confusing in Blender because we do not. For this, we go to the output format. So there we have, let's say, 2000 by 1000. So you see it's a 2 to 1. If we set this to 1000 to 1000, it's a 1 to 1. I could also say 800 to 800. Again, exactly the same. You see the image does not get smaller. This is just the ratio. However, this is the, the actual pixel output we will generate. So I switched uh, this actually more to kind of like a, a portrait. Very nice. And then I can move the camera a little bit closer to frame everything a little bit more. Very good. There. And yeah, so now we have actually created a camera positioned to that view. That is quite nice. Maybe now we want to add one additional camera from kind of like a side view. So shift D, make a copy to here. Then we in this view we go set active as camera, rotate this. There it is. Okay. Now we see our backdrop is too small. Okay. SNX, make it bigger. Done. Cool. And now we can switch between the cameras very easily. So this is, here's the shortcut. So control or Apple and then the, the zero on the numpad. It's actually super easy to move around or like it's um, orthographic view. The camera here, where the camera is, it doesn't matter because this is just a scale. So here, there can frame this. Now I have a side view or a perspective view. Very good. This is how you honestly set position um, and work with cameras. And this really, you said stepped off here, what we didn't cover, all really that's needed to know. Maybe here we can call this camera front and then this we call camera, I don't know, corner. And this is camera ortho side. This is all inside the EMS um, collection too. Um, I might make a new collection, say lights, camera. So then all this I will select, put to there. What is this thing here? That's actually my background plane. Okay, I'll put this all to, also into there. Backdrop. So I could, for example, very easily turn all the stuff off and on. Very good. That's it.